Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to today's webinar, New in Version 17.2, DevExtreme HTML and JavaScript Controls by DevExpress CTO Julian Bucknell and DevExpress Web Program Manager Mahul Harry. In this session, see an in-depth review of our upcoming HTML5 and JavaScript products. This session is being recorded and it will be made available on our DevExpress YouTube channel later today. We will also do a live Q&A at the end of this presentation. Just type your questions in the GoToWebinar control panel at any time throughout the broadcast. All right, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Mahul and Julian. Thank you, Amanda, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to, as Amanda said, what's new with the uh, client side, JavaScript, HTML5 controls, DevExtreme, that also supports all these other great frameworks, which we'll talk about. And I'm joined today by the one, the only, Mr. Julian Bucknall, our very own CTO. How are you, Julian? <laughs> Well, good morning, and uh, I don't know what to say after that uh, introduction, apart from, you know, I'm here as the novice, and uh, Nihal is here as the professional, so uh, we'll see what we have that's new on the client side, and welcome everybody. Thank you, Julian. So, everybody, today the first thing I would like to discuss is very much the fact that uh, if you go to devexpress.com, you'll see the what's new and 17.2 is out today. So let me just take a brief minute to tell you how to download this product because we do get questions about it. Now, uh, I will tell you the very simple secret that you can download the trial even if you're a customer and then I believe there's a section in there for logging in. But I, I'd go to your download your product section and once you're logged in, you'll see this at the top. And then of course, you'll see all the products you pay for. And then of course, uh, I recommend grab the universal subscription if you have that. However, uh, since you're DevExtreme customers, many of you probably have the DevStream subscription. Either way, you can select the latest version here. So all the past versions are available to you. And then you can download the XE or the zip. I recommend the XE installer, uh, or you can download just the zip package for Mac or Linux users. And then you can see the major changes. Now there's a couple of different logs. So this is sort of the technical breakdown. This is what, uh, actually, sorry, this is the one that points to our what's new page. Uh, a lot of times we'll have a, a change log as well. So if you click the change log, you'll see the specific notes that are referencing the individual items. So we translate all this into the uh, what's new that you'd see on our website. Uh, now, I want to briefly mention as well, so when you do see the change log, you're brought to this site here, the version history. This is a very useful uh, site that you can use because if you're on an older version, let's say you're back in, I don't know, 16.11 and you want to see, wow, what is it like if I upgrade to 17.2.3? Well, you can select the product and then you'll see specifically the changes between minor major versions. It's excellent. You'll see any uh, issues, breaking changes. All of this good stuff is listed out for you specifically as well as links to the what's new. All right, so that said, you can get it today and also uh, you can go to devexpress.com, click what's new and specifically for DevExtreme, you can click the HTML5 JS and see this or you can also just go to js.devexpress.com, our specific DevExtreme site and click the what's new there as well and it's got the same great info. All right, so let's just dive right into it and uh, today, Julian and I are gonna show you everything in 17.2. Now, uh, that includes the main library, DevExtreme, with all of the great controls, scheduler, uh, pivot grid, all that good stuff, as well as we're gonna be discussing the ancillary frameworks that we support like Angular, React, and of course, the new DevExtreme ASP.NET MVC controls that we re released, and we'll wrap it up with some Q&A. So, Let's just dive right in. As I mentioned, everything we'll, I sh we will show today uh, is based on our live demos. And the reason is you can uh, do this for yourself as well. So for example, if you go to our DevStream site, click demos, then you can easily find this yourself as well. So the first thing I wanna discuss is the data grid. Now this is probably the most popular uh, control in the library, uh, being that everybody needs a grid and it's powerful and it's excellent. And the data grid has a new feature that allows you to filter by the column header. So what that means is you can come in here and let's say if I'm looking at city, well, 
this header filter allows you to see all of the unique values of the different rows in here. So it's gonna find all the Las Vegas's and Casper Wyoming's and everything and put them available for you. But if you've got a lot of them, then it may be hard to find and go, well, which one do I check if I'm only looking for one or two? So let's say I'm looking for Los Angeles. I can easily select that by just typing in this search box here. Now, you're gonna see this theme again and again. We added a search box in a, into a lot of areas uh, and you'll find, well, your end users will find this as a really helpful way of getting uh, usability uh, back into their daily lives because they can quickly filter down to the immediate thing that they want to. Now, it's actually very easy to enable as well. You simply uh, do an allow search and that will uh, uh, enable that search text box. Now we've also added it to our column chooser. So if you've got the column chooser here and you can see I've just got zip code, well to enable it, like I said, it's pretty simple. You can just go to the column chooser and say allow search quote true and hit apply and we'll get a little text box now at the very top. Now right now I've got one column in there. But if I had a bunch of columns like city, state, zip, home, etc., and I wanted to find, well, where's home? As soon as I start typing that, it will be enabled. So, excellent little feature. Now, another feature we've added is date time data type support. Now, let's go back to the uh, filtering demo. We can see this here. And if you click on this here, so you can see we've got a date time column here. And you can see that we've got a field here now so that you can easily uh, show this. Now obviously it shows proper formatting uh, to the cell display text and the cell drop downs include these time editing controls which is very handy for your users and the grid allows you to filter data while taking time values into account. So excellent excellent feature which you can experience through this filtering demo. Now, uh, one last little thing is, uh, I don't have a little demo of it, but I'll just simply mention, we've added the ability so you can implement your own value comparison functions and basically enable your own custom data sorting algorithms. So, uh, if you wanna learn more about that, uh, you can actually contact our support team. We'll have some documentation up on it. Uh, so Julian, let me hand it over to you. Uh, thank you. And I'd just like to point out uh, something that uh, you saw then when Mahul was uh, um, displaying this particular one of the demos is the nice thing about the client side demos is we provide the, the JavaScript there. You can just change the JavaScript, hit apply and experiment with the demo on our website and that's a, a great feature I find when I'm looking in, uh, to understand about a particular control and so on. I'm going to talk now about the changes to the uh, scheduler or scheduler as they say over here. A um, couple of good new features here. The first one is um, a lot of times we found that Although we have these nice day views and week views and so on and so forth, month views, uh, sometimes people want to see more than just today in the day view. So they want to see like today and tomorrow or three day span or something like that. So we've added this, uh, what we're calling the increased view duration. So you can now specify the number of days, weeks or months uh, to display within those particular views. Great feature, gives you a, your users a a better idea of what's going on inside their um, their scheduled appointments and so on. Um, next up for the scheduler is in the, in the month view, um, especially if you've got a calendar which is kind of packed with appointments, we can only really show uh, you know a couple of appointments in each particular day cell within the month view. So what we've done now is we've kind of compressed it and have this adorner which says, okay, you can only see two views here, uh, two appointments here, but really there are some more. So we have this nice adorner which you can click on. We get a nice list of the other appointments that appear on that particular day. And you can do things like delete the appointment, you can you know, grab hold of the appointment from that list and drag it somewhere else. Uh, all of those features work. 
but it gives you a better look, um, um, an easier way to look at a month for you and understand uh, where your appointments are and how many you have and um, still be able to uh, edit them and uh, so on and so forth. Next up is, um, I can't remember, Michal, do we have this as a demo? Uh, we have added a current date time indicator to the views. In other words, we'll indicate what today is and what the current time is as a kind of arrow uh, within the um, uh, within the view, I can't remember whether it actually got updated or not on the uh, on the demos. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's something yeah. that you'll see on a lot of the uh, views already. Uh, but yeah. I, I, we may get a future appointment on that. Yeah. So it's just a way of showing where you are inside your calendar. Uh, this is the current time, and you know, hence which uh, appointments are future, which are not future, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, that's it for the scheduler. So next up, I believe, is the tree list. Yeah, absolutely. And before I uh, uh, jump to the tree list, Julian, I will mention that you, you're right. Th what's really nice about these demos, they're all online. And if you download that installation, these are also installed locally. But if you just want to play around, you can. we also have this link that says copy to CodePen. Now, CodePen IO allows you to take that sample so we give you the HTML, JS, and so forth, and you can completely modify this, play around with it, all that good stuff. So I highly recommend playing around with the demos anytime you'd like. I mean, mess around, change the settings, see uh, see what works for you. All right, so next up, we've got the tree list. Now, the tree list, as Julian mentioned, is, uh, uh, well, it's one of our bigger controls. It's like our data grid. And in this version, we have what we call the recursive node selection and you'll find it under this multiple row selection so you do have to enable it and um, once you enable it what it does it works i think the way selection should work and that's because if i've got a hierarchical layout if i select just mary i wouldn't expect any other items to be selected however uh, if i select kevin well, I want everything under Kevin to be selected as well because these are belonging under Kevin, the shipping manager and the employees that work with him. And so you can see that this now with recursive selection will recursively go back and select the appropriate nodes that belong to that. So the child nodes will get selected. Now, if you don't want that feature, you can disable it and individually just select certain items. So that's a nice feature. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the grid, we also have updated the uh, column chooser. So now you'll see in the column chooser that we've added a search box here as well. And uh, I'm a big fan, you know, put, it's like putting Google in your controls. And uh, this thing quickly lets you find, so for example, if I'm looking for a certain column, your end users will can just type and uh, freeform type something and they will quickly be able to uh, get at it if there's too many items in here as well. And it's a similar thing with the header filter as well that I showed. So the header filter can also have a search box just the same way that the data grid can as well. All right, Julian, let me hand it back to you. Okay, and now, he says, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to talk data visualizations, the charts. And um, we've been having a, a bit of a laugh about this particular one. Um, we've added uh, the funnel chart to the chart types that you can uh, display and uh, use for data visualization with Dev Extreme. The thing about funnel chart for me is I, I'm not a great fan of it. It, um, it basically gives you the option to show how um, a process um, something along those lines changes the uh, the values in some population. So here we have um, an, an example of if you count the number of people who visit the website, oh, say only 25% download the trial, which makes 56 percent con contacting support and so forth. So you see that kind of funneling down of um, detail, if you like. We've also added um, the opposite and that's the pyramid chart um and this one you know same kind of thing 
um, just shows you a different way of uh, displaying uh, composition of uh, values uh, within uh, some kind of population or other. So here we got, you know, 18 architects, but, you know, 75 junior engineers. And it's like the old food chart or whatever it was, food, food pyramid that uh, used to have. Um, so those two are new charts. They're actually built as separate controls and not actually really part of the charting package. Um, they just have the same kind of naming convention for properties and methods and what have you. So funnel and pyramid charts, the other great one uh, or a better one that um, I'm interested in is in our bar charts and that is scale breaks so um, it's a new feature imagine you've got a you know bar chart where some of the bars are actually way way taller than other bars so here we have the uh, planets and their relative masses jupiter obviously is the heaviest planet out there and if we just throw it into a bar chart like this you can't even see you know the relative size of mars and mercury because um, we can't display that shorter um, a bar so the enable breaks option here shows you uh, we we basically try and render the bar charts in roughly the same size by instituting these breaks in between. So if you look on the axis on the left there, you'll see the break from, you know, size 1 to size 15, and there's a break between 17 and 95, and between 95 and 318. There are options to change the uh, way we do the break. So here we have a kind of wavy line kind of break. There's also a straight line break as well. Uh, Nifty, I think that's that's worth well more than the funnel chart. Don't tell the team. And next one I want to talk about is the financial indicators charts. So here, what we've done, it doesn't look any different, but it is. Because if you think about it, the stock markets are closed at weekends. And there's no point in actually trying to show the weekend dates for a um, a uh, stock chart or um, a candlestick chart. It's it's dark, at, as Mihal shows here. Um, essentially, there's a, there's always a gap when you're talking about stock market and all that kind of stuff. It's the weekend or it's Thanksgiving or whatever it happens to be. So what we've done with these charts is to chop out basically the days when there is there are there is there is no trading um, to basically get more information and more visualization into the chart on uh, periods when the stock market is open. And I think that's, yep, that's about it for data visualization changes in DevExtreme. Let's talk a little bit more about the widgets. Absolutely. So, I, Julian, it's safe to get you a Christmas card in the shape of a uh, funnel chart, correct? Oh, Absolutely. If you want to stay on my Christmas card list, that's the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about the data editors. Now, the uh, data editors actually have a new control within them, and it's a very nice control. Uh, it's a powerful control that you have likely seen in other uh, DevExpress controls, and that is the um, filter builder. So you'll find it under the forms and multi-purpose. But if you're ever curious, like, how do I find something in these demos? You guys have so many controls. We have like, I believe over 65 controls or something like that in here. Well, you can mm -hmm. simply go up here in the search and you can type something like, you know, funnel or you can type filter builder and you can see all of the uh, related demos. So uh, I recommend using this because I actually tend to use it a lot. We use it internally because uh, obviously we have a lot of uh, demos. But the filter builder, as you've likely seen, if you haven't, let me explain it to you. It's probably the best way that your end users can filter something. And if they used something like Excel, they'll be used to this concept. But what it does, it allows them to build using, let's say, natural language query terms like and and or with operators like equals, does not equal, less than, greater than. These are all common terms that they've likely used before in Microsoft Office products. But if, even if they're not, they're pretty self-explanatory. Something is equal to and so forth. Now, when bound to a larger widget, and this can be, this filter builder is a separate control, but it can be bound to the list, 
data grid, and tree list widgets. So what's nice about that is that once it's done, it will tell you the available columns. So for example, here I can say, well, find me what cost is less than, or I can come in here and say less than and equal to, and I can even change the values like instead of 200, I can say, you know, give me something less than 400, immediately apply that. And of course, our filter builder will update our tree list. And because this is all rendered on the client side, you'll see that it'll get refreshed immediately. So very nice, uh, powerful control. And this is available, like I said, with the grid, with the list as well. And if you wanna see a slightly different version in the under the data grid, we have a filter builder demo. And here you'll see that we've incorporated a little button here at the top. And so when you click that, a modal pop-up comes up with the filter builder embedded in it. Now it's still a separate widget at this point, likely in the future, we'll probably make it part of the data grid. But as you can see right now, it's fairly easy to integrate the two and it's not too difficult at all. So uh, take a look for that. Next up, we have the tag box. Now the tag box, uh, if you've used it before, it's a nice little control that allows you to display a certain amount of tags. Now you can come in here and say, look, I've got a certain amount of items that I wanna show. Well, if you don't have room to show them, the tag box will now group multiple tags into a single label. And that's really useful because for your end users, if they have enough items to display it, they'll show it. So for example, here, if I come in and I say, look, I've got one item, but if I start going in and say, look, okay, two items, I got room for that. Three items, I start losing space and it's going to collapse them into a useful label, single label here that says, okay, here's the first one they selected and here's more, four more items. So really useful because instead of just spanning this and making it look like I've got a bunch, I can know, well, I can click on the four and immediately have access to see what those other four items are. And next we have a feature uh, of the date box and calendar box that's also really useful for both you and your end users. And that's the ability to disable certain dates. So uh, if you look at here, this calendar box, uh, calendar, uh, widget demo if you click disable weekends visually we will put an x through the dates and also they won't be able to be selected so i can select any other dates besides the ones that have the uh, x marked out and what's really nice is that uh, this you can supply a predefined date array or you can implement a function where custom dates are set so it's a very nice feature for your end, you and your end users to prevent them to accidentally select a date. And both the date box and the calendar support this as well. And let's now talk about the tree view. Now the tree view uh, brings in that concept of the search bar. And like I said, I love the search bar. Uh, you know, I don't wanna go hunting and pecking all the time. So if I wanna find something like, find me all the products that start with super, I just start typing and immediately you can see our tree view will uh, display that. So the search box is integrated and you can display that if you'd like, and you can control how it searches. You can either do contains where it finds all instances where the word SUP, uh, either at the beginning, middle, or at the end, or starts with where it finds only those items that begin with SUP. All right, finally, let's talk about the number box. Now, the number box uh let's find. actually before you get to the number box there Mihal, um you're just about to use it there is a search box in the demos here which allows you to find individual demos so it's like the tree view with the search bar we just actually added it as the um you know side here for you to investigate our demos yeah it, julian i have to remember to use that more often I, you're absolutely right <laughs> I'm always like, where did it go? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the number box uh, allows you to specify, obviously things like currency, accounting, and so forth, but we've improved it in 17.2. Now, Julian, you ready for this? Are you sitting down? I'm ready. I, this is, okay, people, this is going to be interesting. All right, we are now supporting the locale data markup language. And yeah, I know you were you were asking yeah, yourself, I'm when like, are we gonna- what? <laughs> It's finally here. Now, if you're not sure what this is, it's a uh, markup language, obviously, for locale data. 
And what's nice though is uh, you can, you know, it's out there, you can read about it on Wikipedia and all that, but we fully support the patterns here. So the specified format can be used as a mask to control what's in the end user uh, input. So for example here, well, let me put this back to regular size and you can see, uh, you can see we've got different formats here and the number box will honor them and make sure the end user only inputs the allowed mask uh, format and that's in the mask. So really nice feature. Now, speaking of that, speaking of locale data markup language, we have <laughs> LDML. You've heard of XML, now it's LDML. I, I had to look this one up, so um, it's, it's very interesting. I, I think I'm gonna need to get a tattoo of that to just to remember what that <laughs> stands for. So we've improved localization uh, by, well, we introduced a new demo. And uh, so this localization, you can read about it on our uh, site, but basically uh, we've got uh, obviously the LDML patterns that you can use dates and numbers regardless of the localization library, whether it's uh, you know the INTL object or globalize. And this demo uh, shows that. So this demo is going to be very helpful for a lot of people who are doing uh, work with localization and uh, you know, websites out there, but our built-in localization now offers thousand separators and decimal separator global configuration options. So it's a, a very handy feature. And we've also got a built-in parser for the INTL object. So you no longer need to implement a custom date time parser uh, when you're localizing with our widgets using INTL. So you can take a look at this demo. All right, Julian, let me hand it over to you. What do we got up next? Um, it's just a quick one. Uh, next, uh, we're going to talk about the pivot grid. And um, the main changes to the pivot grid are essentially to do with um, uh, what you've already seen, and that's the field chooser, uh, for example, the ability to uh, throw up a little uh, box here and choose fields, um, just like we saw with the grid and uh, with the tree list. Um, so that's <clears throat> excuse me that's essentially it for the for the grid mm. we're implementing the field chooser everywhere absolutely and i really like that uh that search panel as you can tell yeah. all right so let's dive into julian uh our uh new themes and this is uh, kind uh -huh. of rare and actually pivot grid is a good way to show it. So let's just take a look at the overview here because in the overview, we've got a real nice demo that integrates our chart and the pivot grid. And now in 17.2, we are introducing five new themes. Now, traditionally, we just had the base theme where we implemented light, dark, and contrast for uh, accessibility purposes. And then of course, compact versions if you're using this on mobile. Well, in 17.2, we are introducing five new themes uh, that are named after uh, sort of the color palette that it's originating from. So Carmine is based on a reddish orange that we use a lot on our site, as you can see. And then we've got uh, some darker themes like Dark Moon and Dark uh, Velvet. So let's take a look at Carmine. And Carmine, Soft Blue, and Green Mist are all based off the light theme. And of course, Dark Moon, in dark violet are based off the dark themes. And so as you, what's nice about this is not only can you see that we are using um, uh, the colors for the widgets, but the charts are updated as well. So keep an eye, for example, on the palette of colors here on the bar chart. When I go from dark violet to let's say dark moon, we've got a slightly different set here. And then we go to Carmine, we've got an absolute different set here. And so that's a really nice feature because we have modified the minor details like the chart color palette as well. Now, And if you think about it, when you go from a light theme to a dark theme, um, you want to keep the same kind of contrast for ancillary things that are being displayed like the charts here. So on a light theme, the charts tend to be displayed in a high contrast, darker color, whereas in a dark theme, the, the uh, charts are going to be displayed in a lighter um, uh, contrast, um, so a higher contrast through a lighter color. I'm just going to drop my phone on the floor. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's an important point, Julian, you just made there that like, 
you know, the background colors, obviously, it's not just that, but also you have to have the right contrast between the light and the dark. And our designers, they, they pour over this stuff and they, I believe they have some beautiful uh, demos you can check out here on our site. So for example, let's take a look at the vector map. I think you'll see a, a good example here as well, that it, when I switch from dark moon to carmine, you can see completely yeah. different uh, sets of colors. And let's also take a look at this side by side bar chart. And that's also a good example from uh, Carmine over to uh, Green Mist and so forth. So play around with these demos. We have all of them available and uh, you can see them. Now, one other thing to mention is that not only can you see these themes here, but they're fully customizable. So if you go and click on the theme builder on our site, it's our online tool where you can take just about any theme that we have, not any, uh, not just about, but any theme that we provide, for, uh, anything from light, dark, and so forth, uh, and customize it. So let's say you come to Carmine and you're like, hey, you know what? I like your Carmine theme a lot. I just don't like the version of the red that you got here. I want something a little bit darker, let's say here, something a little more dark brownish or something like that. Once you click that, you'll see that it gets fully updated and not just fully updated for uh, that one particular color, but all the you know colors that uh, derive off of that and all that good stuff. So it, what's nice is all of the controls can be updated and you can see specifically which controls, how they'll look and all that by clicking on them in the advanced theming section here. But really you can just click export now and from here, it will produce a CSS that you can bring into your project and start using. So fully customizable themes and traditionally, we don't really make a lot of new themes for DevExtreme, not like our we do for other platforms. So this is kind of big news that we've got five at one time, and uh, I'm a big fan of them. So definitely give that a try. Uh, and Julian, let me hand it back to you. What do we got next? Let's talk coding. I mean, that's that's my, my thing about uh doing client-side stuff. Uh, we've updated our TypeScript support to support version two. So uh, that's, that's A, cool, and B, brilliant. And the other thing that we've done alongside that is to update our Angular um, uh, declarations, type declarations. And we've um, improved the type definitions inside our Angular support so that you'll find, um, if you're using TypeScript, um, that you'll see less of those, quote, any, quote, uh, types. Uh, so there'll be better type checking for you uh, if you're using Angular with TypeScript. So that's, um, that's brilliant, uh, improving that type safety uh, all the time. And of course, with Angular, there are other things that we've been doing with Angular. Uh, a great lead in. And just before I mention that, you know, I, I'm really impressed with the way the Angular team has basically adopted TypeScript. And, uh, you know, from the outside, we're like, oh, Microsoft and Google. But you know what? It, it's just developers going, hey, you got something great here. It works fantastic for us. And, uh, you know, Angular and Visual yep. Studio is excellent, as uh, you've probably seen in some of our other yep. webinars. Absolutely. Yep. All right. So thank you, Julian. Now let's talk about Angular because this this is big news. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want to lead with this only because uh, while it is big news, well, I, I should say not big news. It was big work. <laughs> it was a lot of work for the developers. Yeah. And that is uh, that we are now offering DevExtreme without jQuery. So. Uh, Julian, do we hate jQuery? Oh, no, we don't. No, we oh. don't. The thing about jQuery is that it was a great library in its day because of the the various ways the browsers actually you know, did their JavaScript and all that kind of stuff. There was jQuery was required because browsers weren't standardized. But these days, um, especially over the last, I don't know, year, 18 months or something like that, um, maybe even yeah, with Windows 10 and Edge, um, the way the browsers support JavaScript and expose the DOM has become very standardized. It's no longer required, really, to use jQuery um, to make sure that your code, your, your application, your JavaScript stuff will actually work on every single browser. And so, you know, 
jQuery is on version three something or other at the moment. Um, but if you don't need it, if you're just doing slight uh, access to the DOM, then you shouldn't have to use it. I, it's one of those things. It had its day, shall we say. So removing it meant that obviously we had to um, write those bits of jQuery that we used in our own library, and that's what we've done. Excellent. Thank you. Well said, Julian. And exactly as Julian mentioned that in in 2012, back when we were creating this, it actually helped us save some time by using jQuery, and it's totally fine. It's great for what it is. But as is the trend, uh, you know, uh, development trends change, and you know, people favor some things. And jQuery is still excellent. If you're using it, I would take no problem. In fact, we can use jQuery even with DevExtreme today. But there are some things that um, you may want to consider, and I'll talk about it in just a second. Now, the big question is why? Because if it if it took us a long time, we actually started this early in 2017. Because if you, as you can imagine, changing around all of the widgets that are doing DOM, you know, manipulation, DOM selection with jQuery, we had to change all that to these ES6. Uh, uh, methods that uh, equivalent ones make sure tested those and all that that w that wasn't easy but it was worth it and the reason we did all this is because uh, when we started supporting angular people loved it and we did angular in a really good way you know we have better integration with angular than I think anybody else out there and but one of the things that we couldn't do with angular was server side rendering and that's because of our reliance on jQuery and so in order to fully go forward and support SSR, server-side rendering, with Angular, we had to remove the dependency on jQuery. So uh, if you are using DevExtreme with uh, jQuery today, you may want to consider DevExtreme without jQuery. Because what we found, DevExtreme 17.2 with jQuery and without jQuery, there was about a 30% increase in the average time of the widget's rendering and disposing cycle. So that is an immediate benefit that uh, some of our customers will find. Now, you might say, well, hey, this is great news. Can I start using server-side rendering with jQuery today? No. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time. We, we still have you know, uh, a limited set of resources, but we're working on it. So that's the good news. So it's freed us up to not only provide things like server-side rendering, but uh, customers all the time are asking us to support other frameworks like Vue and so forth. It allows us to explore other frameworks that don't uh, work well with jQuery. So we can take our excellent, powerful UI widgets, which is what we're good at, and see where we can provide them for you in the near future. So, uh, and again, there's different benefits for server-side rendering with search engine optimization and so forth. Uh, and another minor benefit of removing jQuery is that you can now, instead of using jQuery deferred, use ES6 native promises. Now, if you're interested in all this, uh, you can read about this on Don's blog post, uh, and we'll likely have, uh, once we, actually Julian, how will we deliver uh, this uh, feature in the future? Server-side rendering? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, I, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably, you know, have a webinar about it and blog post about it. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're... Uh, no, I meant probably like a release candidate or something like that. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I, I dare say we'd, it'll appear before 18.1, uh, but we'll, we'll see how we go on it. Um, the other thing that I'd just like to say about jQuery is... Um, we've been investigating, as you well know, uh, using React. And uh, React does not work with jQuery because React, uh, as you may know or may not know, um, does things outside of the DOM. It has a, a shadow DOM, so it knows when things change, so it can update the actual DOM. Whereas if you throw in jQuery into all that, you're, you're basically messing with React's internals. And as you, as you know, we've been blogging about it. So the React Grid is out in beta. Uh, we've been updating it. It's almost, but almost ready for uh, major release. Um, it's 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 really close. We weren't able to do it for version 17.2, but this one definitely expect it before 18.1. In other words, in the next uh, few two three months or something like that, we'll have the React Grid um, 
sufficiently tested and uh, robust enough for you know, real work and all the rest of it. Over the past month or so, we've added um, uh, improvements to the paging control for the grid. Uh, We've added um, the mobile-friendly features like the paging panel, um, column reordering, um, resizing, and all that kind of stuff. Um, they've all been added. Um, column chooser, yes, the column chooser's there as well. I don't know whether we have it as a, a demo, but uh, certainly yet. the column chooser, not yet. <laughs> so these things have been added. We're updating um, the demo site as, well, as we speak and uh, expect the React grid or the data grid for React um, to appear in its finished state um, just in the new year. How about that? Don't quote me, but maybe. That's great. And what's nice is that it's all on GitHub. It's out there on the open. So all of these uh, features that we've talked about for 17.2 that Julian just mentioned, there's likely a pull request that you can actually see where it got integrated back into the main library, which means you can come in here, you can create issues, you can ask questions. Hey, I'd like to see this feature. Or hey, well, how does horizontal scrolling work? And is this feature added there? So it's out there, people. Please check it out. And uh, as Julian mentioned, it's kind of out of band. So it's not necessarily uh, needed. I mean, getting to going from CTP to beta, that's a big milestone. And I commend the team on that. Uh, but as Julian mentioned, uh, likely uh, they will work on a release candidate. And, and Julian, do you think we should do a, another webinar on the React when it's out there for release? Oh, absolutely. Once, once we release, we're going to do a a good webinar on you know, the features of the React Grid, how to set it up, how to get it going, uh, what's actually happening under the hood and all that kind of great stuff. Uh, I think it's deserving of its own webinar. All right, let's now dive into the last uh, major topic, and that is the ASP.NET MVC controls. Now, we released these earlier uh, this year. We've been working on them for you know more than a year. So internally, and I don't know, you know what, actually, if you have this question, let us know in the, in the comments or in the questions here, but we're working on a little uh, document here, you know, Julian, myself, uh, a lot of devs and stuff, we're putting our heads together to explain why do we have two sets of MVC controls? And if you're, if you're curious at all about that, let us know. But if you're not, don't worry about it. And if you already know and you love these controls, hey, stick with these, these are great controls. So what these are, we basically took all of the dev extreme widgets that you saw earlier. So those are all JavaScript controls. They can be used anywhere, right? They can, you know, PHP, whatever you want to use them with, just go ahead and use them. They're basically HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. That's it, right? And that's how we were able to adapt them for other frameworks, uh, for example, Angular and React and all that good stuff. And obviously, we'll look at Aurelia and Vue and all that stuff in the future. So why do we have these MVC controls? Well, first of all, these controls, because they wrap client side, that means that they render on the client side. So they, the good news is that being that when you wrap them as server side controls is you get the value of using uh, them as native MVC extensions. So they work in Visual Studio, you have Razor support, you have IntelliSense, all of that good stuff is available in Visual Studio. We have project templates, file new, and uh, we're able to uh, support things like uh, ASP.NET uh, Core as well as uh, ASP.NET MVC. So for example, uh, and you probably saw, I did a whole webinar on this, we've got ASP.NET Core 2.0 support. The team is right there along with uh, the ASP.NET controls. But as I mentioned, they're also, you can use them with ASP.NET uh, 4 or 5, likely you're probably using it with ASP.NET 5. Um, so that's available as well. And so in this release, we have added some upgrades for our ASP.NET uh, DevStream MVC controls. So the DevStream MVC controls, first of all, we've added some project templates for ASP.NET Core 2.0, I believe in 17.2. And uh, we also have upgraded uh, a few other things. Now, let's first start with uh, the data upgrades. So we've upgraded the data layer. Now, I started talking about this back in August. 
And so what this is, we had some customers who said, hey, we've got some problems with the way URLs are generated between MVC and Web API data sources. And we said, okay, well, we've got a good solution for that, but it's a, it could be a breaking change for your project. So back in August, when we first uh, talked about this, I said, hey, listen, this is not a mandatory thing. It's an optional thing that you can change over to the new way uh, because what you can do is if you like the old way, then you can use the legacy routing, use legacy routing and you set it to true. Well, now with 17.2, as I warned back in August, that this was not, this was be going to be a, uh, a change. So if you want to use the old way, you can still do this. Uh, however, please test it, make sure it's going to work out okay for you because it could break uh, projects, right? It could be a breaking change. Early feedback from customers has been pretty good. Most customers are like, hey, it's working just fine. So uh, if you've seen problems before, then uh, try this new approach. It's, it's much better and uh, you'll find it very helpful. Now, if you've got a large MVC application and you're using areas to separate your model view controllers, for example, accounting with uh, finance, you know, you've got all these different areas, you don't wanna mix and match all these different modules and controllers and views and so forth. Well, we have support for areas with our data sources as well and we've got configuration options that you can add as well. So you can read all about it in our uh, uh, web blog post here that links to our documentation and all that good stuff as well. And of course, uh, we've got uh, support for, uh, better support in our ASP.NET data library. We've added some new features, some minor features that you can read about as well. All right, we've also have, um, added a new uh, couple of features in Visual Studio that make it a lot easier. So we've added, if you remember our project converter, well, we have brought that over for ASP.NET Core as well. So now let's say you started with a Microsoft project template. And so you've got a new Microsoft project template for ASP.NET Core. Well, you can right click on the project template and say, add dev extreme to this project. Now I showed all of this in that what's in that, now what's new webinar, in that webinar that I mentioned earlier, and you can find that if you don't have the link, let me know, I'll send it to you. But basically what this will do, it will upgrade this project by adding all the necessary references. So we'll add the ASP.NET data library to the references, any resources to the root folder, all of that good stuff. And if there's any further things that you need to do, for example, you use our ready to use layout or upgrade your own, we've got even a helpful readme that we add to the project. So it converts your project and it makes it a lot easier. Again, you can walk through that with me in this webinar if you'd like to see more about it. All right, we also have a new uh, way. Now, Julian, how do you feel about Lambda expressions? Under expressions, they're great. Uh, aren't they? They're really good in JavaScript as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But you're, you're talking C sharp, so, you know, hey, man, I. Hmm. You know, I remember there was a time when you actually liked C sharp. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I know you still uh, love talk it. Talk about it with my kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> La well, Lambda expressions are excellent. And so what they allow you to do is they allow you to write some nifty code and it almost looked like magic, but again, it just, it, it makes a lot of sense, but it allows you to re write some really strong razor syntax code with C sharp in ASP.NET MVC. So for example, and now we already had support for Lambda expressions, but we've got new strongly typed HTML, hem, Lambda exp, HTML helpers where we extended the Lambda expressions within them. So what we've done is we've improved more, we increased more Lambda expressions for data and tree list columns, summaries, pivot grid fields, and items for our form control where you'll see we've got some uh, nifty things we can do with that now. So what that means is, for example, is when you're creating uh, uh, HTML data grid and you're binding it up, no longer do you have to write magic strings. So you don't have to say, hey, the data field is quote category name. And I say that as a question mark because when you're writing as a string, it's hard for the uh, uh, Visual Studio IntelliSense to actually check that for you and say, oh yeah, I can go check your model where uh, you've got sale and I can't check to see. But if you're writing it uh, as a Lambda expression, it can, while you're typing this, tell you IntelliSense wise, oh, here's the available category names. So it's fantastic and it's really nice. And what's further 
is that it makes uh, working with data annotations much easier. So if you've got a model marked up with data annotations that says things like, hey, you know, the display name is category. Well, our grid will pick up on that and honor that. And it also is really nice for better validation because if you've also got attributes on your annotations for things like required and string length and range, well, we'll pick up on that and apply the validation to the grid and uh, editors within the grid uh, to make sure that it's available. Now, what's really nice is a lot of time customers said, hey, Developer Express, we love that you've got, for example, this form control. So if you see in our form control, uh, it's really nice because it helps you build, uh, let me show you here. Uh, it helps you build forms. Well, you might say, well, forms, what are you talking about? Well, we have to, you know, forms or data. Uh, that's essentially what the web is a lot of day now these days, right? You have to build these forms. It can get tedious because you're like, I've got my model. Why can't you just build the form for me? Well, that's what our form control does for you. And now with the uh, with the uh, new uh, support for Lambda expressions, you can now use our form control to not just look at your model, but quickly build a, uh, a strongly typed uh, 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 HTML helpers form control. So it will pick out and display this form control. So likely I think we'll have a demo of this. If not, we'll have, uh, maybe we'll do this in a future webinar or something. But a lot of customers actually had asked us, hey, it'd be lovely if I can just do this, bind it up to my model and have you build that form for me with uh, the validation of that good stuff. So again, you can um, you can uh, do this. Now you might say, well, I'm not ready to use your new fancy Lambda expressions. Are you gonna break my code? No, it's optional. So, but I do recommend it. I, I, it's, you know, uh, it's something you should uh, highly consider using. Now, Julian, one last thing about the MVC controls, and that is we have a new template. Now, uh, we support templates already in DevExtreme. Now, you can see that uh, with our, within our demos, they're all over the place, and templates allow you to expand not just functionality, but look and feel. So templates are a very powerful way. So for example, as you can see, we've got this master detail view demo that shows how you can embed uh, items into another way, uh, into another thing, or you can have a template for a column and so forth. Templates are really powerful way uh, for our controls. Unfortunately, because we are wrapping these extensions, uh, these ASP.NVC extensions are wrapping our JavaScript controls. Occasionally, some of the what I technically uh, termed JavaScripty things would bubble up, and so. Previously, if you wanted to have template support and to embed something, it wasn't really uh, a great way to do it. Well, I'm happy to say in 17.2, we've got what we call the named template helper for creating complex views. And so what's nice about this, it reduces a lot of the amount of code that is needed for to generate this uh, uh, layout. So here, if I expand this advanced master detail view, if I expand this row, I've got a uh, tab panel and in it I've got on a few controls I've got a grid here I've got uh, uh, probably a f another form control so I've got a lot of things happening embedded and what's nice is that the temp name template helper allows us to do that so if we can take a look here my grid has a template that said look I've got from the master detail I want to call a template and it's got a grid container well the grid container is using the name template helper that says well I've got a tab panel that's going to go in there and the tab panel has within it a form control the form control has a data grid as well as a another form so you can see how uh, uh, how deeply you can nest almost to not almost you can nest to unlimited levels if you'd like I wouldn't recommend it but you can but what's nice about this is a code is reduced, code is clean, makes sense, each is in its own individual section, and it's very, you know, works very nicely with each other. And it's all Razor syntax here. No longer are you having to write some unusual JavaScript here and there. This is all Razor syntax. You've got, you know, the powerful Lambda expressions as I mentioned before. Now, one other feature that I should mention about this is that if you take a look at the localization global, uh, globalized demo, uh, as I mentioned, 
some of these JavaScripty things tended to pop up. Well, you know, in JavaScript, we tend to bundle uh, certain scripts and so forth. Well, in uh, previously, it was a little difficult when you were trying to do uh, globalize with how scripts were bundling because ASP.NET handles bundling slightly differently. Well, if you take a look at this demo, we've got this new script builder that makes it a little bit easier. So if you want to read more about that, check out this demo. But we are, with each release, making these MVC controls better within DevExtreme. So whenever we introduce, for example, our filter builder or something, that is automatically available for DevExtreme. Now, uh, we'll talk more about this. And if there are questions about this, you know, I wouldn't mind answering them now. Uh, so speaking of that, Julian, have you got a chance to look at the questions? Shall we pop up and see if we can answer any uh, customer questions right now that haven't been answered by the uh, developers? I haven't had a chance to, to look at the questions list. So uh, let's bring Amanda back, I think. Nice discussion there about JavaScripty things. <laughs> well, let me answer one question. So uh, Jacob had a question. Why do we not support React for all components? Great question, Jacob. Ooh. Well, the honest truth is we when we created React, uh, we didn't take the DevExtreme set of widgets and said, here, React, here you go, right? We could have wrapped them for React. So we actually asked our customer base that said, look, we can do this where we wrap our controls. What's nice is it saves us time. It provides you all of these powerful controls. Unfortunately, it's not the right and I'm using air quotes here, you can't see me, but I'm actually using air quotes. It's not the quote unquote right way to do this. And our customer base said, no, don't do that. We'd prefer if you did it the right way. Take the time because React is really awesome. We'd love for you to do it the right way. Well, we did that. And along the way, we made some decisions. For example, we didn't even, uh, we, we, did, we, we said early on, theming, we're not gonna do theming. We're gonna rely on Bootstrap, Google Material UI because there's a ton of themes already out there for those. So we adopted popular libraries there. We said, okay, well, we're not gonna probably do the basic editors like uh, you know text box and so forth because again, they're provided by these popular libraries. We'll focus on what we're good at, creating these large powerful controls that do things like sorting. Uh, uh, let me show you this. One of my favorite demos here is this virtual scrolling. Just take a look and see how fast virtual scrolling is. This is bananas. This is all on the client side, and I'm going 200,000 rows. That's one of the strengths of React. I'm a big fan of React. It's it's powerful, and I really like the way we did this. And again, you know, as, as we talked about before, and Julian mentioned with jQuery, you know, back then jQuery was integrated in there, so we couldn't easily port our controls. Now, you know, some others have done that. Go on them for that. If you like that approach, fair enough. And a lot of people love what we did. This is React the way React should be done, but it comes at a cost. We can't easily pour everything. It takes time. So we have plans. And again, go to GitHub. We, we've got some you know, great customers out there that said, hey, we love this stuff. When am I getting charts? When am I getting scheduler, et cetera, et cetera. Julian, you got me saying scheduler. Uh, <laughs> Schedule. Yes. Uh, well, it's coming. Give us your feedback. Your feedback helps derive our future plans. So please let us know. Uh, but let us know instead of saying, hey, when are you going to port everything? You know, we can't do it overnight, obviously. So tell us. I would really love to see this one next. This is my top three wish list. Let us know that and then we can make decisions after we figure out what everybody is most interested in. Quick question, Jacob had a follow-up question. It's like technical limitations. I think I addressed that. The controls initially, uh, you know, like I said, the jQuery dependencies and so forth, things like that. You know, when we created these controls, they had their own SPA framework. And then eventually we realized people are more interested in using our controls in other popular frameworks, not necessarily our own framework. So we changed gears and said, okay, well, we're gonna concentrate more on the library. So even to this day, people ask us, what about DevExtreme Mobile? Well, DevExtreme started as a mobile library, but we don't focus on that because people are more interested in building client-side desktop applications with support for mobile. But if you wanna make a truly mobile, these days we say, Go out and use Ionic. I mean, we, we support it. Go out and use, you know, Bootstrap. 
our our strength is in providing things that you don't normally find out there. You don't see a powerful scheduler. If you want to see examples of that, click on demos here and just look at these powerful demos: Sales Viewer, Stock Market, Dev AV, all of these. You just can't build that with you know typical uh, uh, controls out there. And so we really showcase that in these demos, and you can see that. Look at this beautiful dashboard, all built with Dev Extreme uh, charts, all of this stuff built with Dev Extreme. So we're going to focus on that we're going to we're going to integrate with libraries that our customers are really interested in and so that's the long and short of it that's the major and minor plans and i'm probably running over here so julian i hand it back to you while i show our final slide about our contact info and hit us up on twitter facebook all that good stuff let me hand it over to you julian and uh, I'd just like to reiterate what uh, Mihul was saying. Basically, with React, yes, we could have wrapped what we already have. But the thing about React is it's a visual tree of React components. So you go down, down, deeper, and down, and it's all React all the way down. And that's the way React works. Yeah, you can make a nice little black box, but it's not React anymore. Anyway, back to Amanda. Amanda, hello. Hello, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amanda. And uh, hey, sorry, I'll just say <laughs> thanks, everyone, for joining. And again, yeah, let us know. Would Julian and I love when you contact us on Twitter and email and all that good stuff? Great. Thanks, Mahul. Sure. All right, everybody. Like I mentioned before, today's webinar will be available uh, later on our DevExpress YouTube channel. Plus, if you've missed any of our launch webinars, you can also find them on there as well. Or you can visit devexpress.com slash webinars and scroll to the bottom for recorded sessions. While you're there, we also have one more launch webinar tomorrow morning, Dashboards, Reporting, and Analytics uh, with Julian. He'll be back and Paul Usher, so register for that one today. And that is it for this one. Thank you so much to Mahul, Julian, and to the team. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.